Hello everybody, welcome back to Ted's Fish Room. The topic of this video, reverse osmosis. A few weeks ago, I noticed that this machine was not operating as well as it should. So in this video, we're going to talk about how the machine works, and I'm going to show you how you overhaul it and get it working as good as new. Let's start off with a little tour of my reverse osmosis machine so you can see how it's set up. This is the water going into the unit line. This black line comes from a faucet which is down below the unit. And the first thing it hits is a meter probe. This meter is connected to this TDS meter and it will tell me what the TDS of the water going into the unit is. Then the water passes through a sediment pre-filter which removes any kind of particulate matter. Then the water passes through a carbon pre-filter and the carbon pre-filter will uh, remove chlorine and a few other chemicals and things like that. Clean the water up a little bit before it goes in the membranes. Then the hose is actually behind this pre-filter and it goes up into this first membrane up top and water passes through this membrane chamber then it passes through this bottom membrane chamber and then it goes through this unit which is a part of the disconnect valve. Whenever I have water go to my reservoirs I have a float valve and when the reservoirs are full the unit is told to stop and this is a part of that and I'll explain that when we get to it a little bit later. Then the reverse osmosis water exits from here and now this is going to go to the reservoirs where I store the water. But here's another meter and I can flip this little switch and I can turn the button on and that will tell me what the TDS of the water coming out of the RO system is. You should see a major difference and this is the problem that I had earlier this week. I went and tested my little TDS meter and I found out that the water coming out of my RO system wasn't as soft as it should be. Okay, so this yellow line is wastewater and the wastewater is what exits down the drain. An RO system wastes a lot of water. Three, four, sometimes five times as much water as it makes RO. The business end of the wastewater line is this and this is called a flush valve kit. Whenever you use RO or you use your machine you'll get sediment and you'll get other solid material built up in the chamber around your membrane. This valve when you open it will flush the sediment away from your membrane. It's very important if you would like your membrane to last for a long time you do that every time you start your RO system for a couple minutes. You close it off and then water is going to be restricted so that the flow rate is controlled going through the unit. What controls the flow rate is inside this side of the flush valve kit is a flow restrictor, this little capillary tube and this is what defines how much water is wasted versus how much of water is made by the RO system. And you saw that mine was pretty short and that's a part of the problem. So I'm actually going to be replacing that uh, restrictor capillary tube and show you how to adjust it so you get the right amount or the right ratio between wastewater and RO water. So now we need to get this unit off the wall and we need to get it into where I can start changing some of the parts in it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wastewater line because it's going to stay here in the room I'm going to take my uh, in, input line and I'm going to take it off of my meter. That's going to sit here. And then I'm going to take my line that goes to my reservoir. I'm going to take it off the meter. I'm replacing the meter. So this is going in the trash. Bye bye. Uh, we, nothing we need to do is we remove these. Um, Remove these pre-filters, they're full of water. 
We don't want to have that weight. It's kind of a mess. So I'm just going to use this wrench and loosen them up. Set these aside. I'll change those pre filters too. Now we're good to go. Let's take this into the other room and show you how we change the membranes out. So I was actually recording earlier and I didn't actually hit the record button. So this section of the video is coming after I actually overhauled the entire unit. So what you have to do to get more than the old membrane out and the new membrane in is you have to unhook the tube. I usually unhook them all, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to unhook that one and pull the tube off of pull the casing off of the unit and then unscrew this. And your membrane is going to be seated down inside here. And you'll probably need a pair of pliers if it's an old membrane to pull that out. One end of the membrane has got these little gaskets on it. That is the end that goes all the way into the back end of the chamber. So you take your new membrane, you shove it in there, make sure it's seated. and screw the cap back on. And once you've changed both of the membranes, you can reassemble your unit. It's pretty important to make sure that you look at where all the tubes go, or maybe even mark them. Because once you take all the tubes off one of these things, getting them back on the right order can be tricky. Now I'm gonna hang this back up on the wall. I'm going to get all my tubes connected. Here is my wastewater tube. This is my effluent tube. Oh, you know what I need? I need to get that meter. Hold on, right back at that meter. Okay, here's my new meter. This one so conveniently says in. So I'm going to connect that to my black line. Just coming from my faucet. And now I'll connect the other end of it over here like this. And this one conveniently says out. So I connect that to my blue line. Like so. Then I can, I already have Velcro in here, so I'll need the extra Velcro. I can take my meter and stick it there like that. Now all I really need to do is put on the pre-filters. So here is the carbon pre-filter with a new cartridge. And it goes. Hand tight is plenty. And here is a new sediment filter with a brand new pure white dry Gotta get these kind of flat and tight. Okay, so let me double check all my uh, all my connections. One of the last things I need to do is I need to take out this old restrictor, and I want you to notice how much longer this new restrictor is than the old one was. I made a mistake by trimming this one too far. I put a new one in. Takes a little bit to get it down in there. You may have to get down this end and then wiggle it through because it's longer than the elbow. 
But once it gets in there, and now I'm going to turn this back on, but I'm going to pull my camera up here so I can show you. Turning on the water, checking my pressure, pressure is good. Yeah, you know, come down here and look at my wastewater. Wastewater is good. Now I'm going to flush this. Watch what happens to the wastewater. Really picks up steam. Now I'm going to close it off. Put this back down my drain. Now what I can do is I can test to see what my TDS going in and coming out are. So I'm going to take my meter and I'm going to turn it on. And right now it's set to the end line, which is this line here. And I don't think you can read that or not. The TDS is reading, oh, there goes my focus. Well, it's reading 275 parts per million. Now I can turn it over here. Now it's going to read zero. That's exactly what we want to see. Before I made all these changes, it was reading 30. So now let's do what we want it to do. So now the RO system is running. Water is exiting through this blue line goes through this wall, goes along the wall, and ends up going into my two holding vats. To my two holding vats, which hold our water. Two of them, each of them hold about 220 gallons of water. This apparatus right here is a part of my float valve. This is a back pressure uh, chamber, and then connected right here and on the other tow, tub over there are two float valves. And whenever these vats are full, the float valves kick up, pressure is stored in here, and it causes the RO system to turn off. That way I don't have to worry about these filling up too much and flooding. So one thing you want to know is what the ratio of wastewater to RO water is coming out of your unit. And the way you measure that is you're going to have time for 30 seconds and you're going to collect the water in something. This is a graduated cylinder so I can see exactly how much I actually collected. So here I go. I'm going to start and put my water in the tube at the exact same time. Ready, set, go. Okay, so there are graduated cylinders filling up and when it gets to 30 seconds, I'll take a measurement, dump the water out, and then we'll do the exact same thing over on the RO side. Three, two, one, stop. Okay. So I'm measuring, and we made 630 milliliters of wastewater in 30 seconds. Now we're going to do the exact same thing over here on the RO side. We're going to measure how much RO water is made in 30 seconds. Here we go. Ready, set, start. When we're done, we'll take the 630 milliliters that we measured on the wastewater and we'll divide it by the number of milliliters we make on the RO water and that will give us our wastewater to RO water ratio. Remember, we're aiming for somewhere between three and four. Four seconds. And stop. Okay, let me plug this back in so I don't keep dripping water everywhere. Okay, now we'll take a look. And we are right at, looks like we're right at 180. So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to take 630 divided by 180 
3.5. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I don't want to shorten my restrictor because I don't want to go any lower than 3.5. I might actually ask them to send me a longer restrictor and maybe get closer to 4.0. So now that I have my RO system working correctly, is it doing what I want it to do? This is a TDS meter. It also measures pH. I'm not so worried about pH at this point. I just want to make sure it's getting out the materials I want to get out. So here's my tap water. 275 parts per million. Here is my RO water. And when I transferred the meter from here over to there, I may have actually brought some hardness with it. It's still going down. It's stopping at four parts per million. So four parts per million from 277 parts per million, that's pretty good. But that's not the kind of hardness that was making my pH go up. What I really need to know about is the carbonate hardness. So I'm going to test that a couple times. First we'll test it on our tap water. Okay, the way these test kits work is you put in one drop and the water is going to turn blue. And you count that drop. And then you're going to put in one drop at a time until the test turns yellow. Two, and you're going to count your drops. Three, four, I'm going to cheat because I know it's going to be about eight. Five, six, Seven, eight, oh, more than that. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, fifteen, almost there. We'll call it fifteen. KH fifteen. That's not very good. That's actually higher than I thought it was going to be. All right, so now let's test our oil water. All right, here we go. One. Oh, and it never even turned blue. Zero carbonate hardness. That makes me happy. Now I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to get the pH for those dwarf cichlids down where I need it to be. If you live someplace where the water is naturally soft, count yourself fortunate. But if you're like the rest of us and your water is extremely hard, you're going to find that about the only way to soften water effectively, quickly, and with ease is with a reverse osmosis machine. The cost of the machine itself is pretty negligible. You can get a machine that will make you 20 or 25 gallons a day for less than $100. The big cost is in the wastewater. I make a lot of RO water. I make it about 500 gallons at a time. And I use that much in about a month. But you won't need a machine nearly as large as mine for your home fish room. Take the step, get an RO system, and you'll find that things like Epistogramma, Tetras, and all those other soft water loving fish are going to be a lot easier to breed. Thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room, and we'll see you next time. <music>